live. Good morning or good afternoon to everyone, uh, wherever you are in uh, around the world. We are here live uh, for uh, the first uh, live talk uh, of International Coronary Congress. Uh, and uh, it's uh, an incredible pleasure for me to be here today with uh, Professor David Taggart from Oxford, uh, Dr. John Pascas uh, from Mount Sinai Morningside, New York City, and uh, Dr. Mario Gaudino from Well Cornell. This is uh, the top notch of the International Coronary Congress. Uh, uh, I, I like to uh, use the phrase of uh, uh, Dr. John Pascas uh, is the Congress of the Nerds in Coronary Surgery. So uh, we are here to, um, as a first appointment, uh, to try to explore more what is International Coronary Congress, uh, uh, what is the upcoming meeting will look like and what to expect uh, in the future of this uh, uh, society and in the future of uh, this uh, um, uh, group of coronary surgeons. I wanted to start first uh, with uh, a question for Dr. David Taggart. Uh, uh, good morning, Dr. Taggart, and thank you for being here. And uh, I want to ask you, what is the uh, current perspective of coronary bypass? I don't see you very well, Dr. Taggart. I know. I think Dr. Tari Grassa has just frozen on screen just now. Oh. Ah, hi, Gianluca. Here we are back again live. Yes. Please. So I was asking you, Dr. Taggart, what is the current perspective of coronary bypass grafting surgery? How does bypass grafting surgery looks like around the world? Where are we at? How ma many cases have been performed around? What is the, the past and the, and, the, and the future of coronary surgery around, uh, ahead of us? So, Gianluca, thank you very much. And I'd first like to welcome everyone who's joining us online today or subsequently. And um, thank you to you personally for bringing us up into this new era of digital communication. It's great to see my great friends and colleagues, Mario Godino and John Paskis online. So we're all here to try and give you the same, um, I guess, outlook of where we are. So a couple of things to say is the point of talking today is really to try and introduce the concept. I think many of our listeners will already be familiar with International Coronary Congress, but also to introduce them to the concept that we're go going to structure a new society the International Society for Coronary Artery Surgery. And I know John's going to talk about that. Just to keep some kind of basic things in mind here, which I think are very, very important. Around the world today, there are still around 800,000 coronary bypass operations performed. Some people would estimate it to be closer to a million, but we can take those as relatively big numbers. The second thing to emphasize is that the evidence basis for what we do in that coronary surgery is the superior revascularization strategy for the vast majority of patients with multivessel and left main disease is overwhelmingly strong, although it's not always reflected in what happens to patients. I think also that we need to think about, and we'll discuss this today, is touch on why is coronary artery surgery not always practiced in terms of that evidence basis. So we can talk about heart teams and the need for really in the way that for structural heart teams, we have very strong teams. Why are we not doing that for coronary artery disease? And I hope these are a few things that we can touch on today. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Taggart. And I, I want to start uh, uh, with Dr. John Pascas, try to uh, revive a little bit the history behind the International Coronary Congress. When International Coronary Congress was found, what was the idea behind, who was there, who, what was, when did you, 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 all of you guys felt the need to, to uh, uh, fill a gap in the, in, in, in the absence of, of a group of, of coronary surgeon or dedicated coronary surgeons? You, please, you are unmuted now, doctor. Yes. Thank you, uh, Gianluca, and uh, uh, thank you to all the attendees at our seminar uh, webinar today. Uh, the International Coronary Congress seeks to bridge the gap uh, between uh, best evidence 
for optimal surgical therapy uh, and current practice uh, or common practice. We want to elevate the quality of coronary surgery globally. And it was with that in mind that uh, David Taggart and uh, Joe Sabic and I uh, were asked to put on a, a very short, uh, I think it was a 90 minute or two hour session at AATS in 2015, just focused on coronary surgery. And we were put in a relatively small room, uh, simultaneous with large um, hands-on uh, opportunities for aortic surgery and mitral surgery. And we found that uh, the attendees at the AATS voted with their feet. Uh, they packed our room, filled it, and in fact, it was standing room only. And despite entreaties from people in the other rooms to come and enjoy what was being offered there, um, the, the average attendee at the meeting did not leave. They stayed and they wanted to talk about coronary surgery, which frankly is what most cardiac surgeons do most days. Yet it gets very short shrift, uh, little attention uh, at the major meetings. Um, that same year, 2015, I had the privilege of uh, working with David Taggart at his uh, local meeting in, in uh, Oxford um, related to arterial grafting. And it occurred to us that there was just far too little attention paid to coronary surgery in general. So that year we founded the International Coronary Congress and with uh, PRRI uh, as a administrative back, uh, backbone, uh, we put on uh, the first International Coronary Congress in December of 2015 uh, in New York City. That's uh, an incredible story, and uh, that was uh, basically how this this congress of people dedicated to coronary surgery started. And uh, where did we move, Dr. Taggart? From there, where did we go? So uh, I know that uh, ICC has changed location. What was the sense behind it? Why did you guys have choose to do that? And which location ICC have touched until now? Great question. So, John, thank you for explaining. Um, the background. So what we thought about, as John said, when we discussed this initially, was that we had to have a semi-permanent basis for it, but also we wanted, as in the name international, we wanted to make this really international. And what we decided on initially, although we haven't quite achieved it completely, was every second year we would alternate it between New York and London as a kind of permanent basis. But in the intervening years, take it abroad. So we took it first to India, then to China. And last year should have been Japan. South America should have been next year. But the last two episodes have been interrupted by COVID. And the other thing that we didn't quite achieve yet is the alternation between New York and London. And we wanted to do that because New York and London appeal to different parts of the market in terms of time zone. But in fact, as it turned out, London was far more expensive than New York. So the current home of it just now is New York. And all of us are very, very happy with that. But if we get our plans correct, we do. And we've always emphasized from the outset, this is the International Coronary Congress. We want this to be representative of what's happening on a global basis. This is uh, great, and I think that this is, has been one of the strengths of this Congress, the fact uh, that uh, is the Congress that moves towards uh, the uh, people who uh, feel, feel uh, close to this uh, group, uh, close to this Congress, people that every day perform coronary artery bypass grafting. Yes. They are willing to do it better for their own patient. So... Doc, Mario, please tell me a little bit now, uh, after all of this uh, very complicated year, actually almost two years of COVID, what are we expecting for 2021? What ICC 2021 will look like, where it will be, when it will be? Well, this is a, a, a great question. And Gianluca, thank you. It's a privilege to be there. Uh, so the first and most important answer to your question is uh, that it will be in person. Finally, after almost two years of uh, pandemic and Zoom and uh, remote uh, meeting, we uh, will have an in-person meeting. And I think we all miss uh, that personal interaction with friends and colleagues, that it's really part of our profession and uh, 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 John, David, and myself uh, from the beginning uh, 
uh, were really, really uh, 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 hoping uh, to have the opportunity to have uh, the meeting in person. And uh, we aimed for an in-person meeting from the get-go, even though at the beginning uh, 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 it was unclear if uh, uh, this would have been possible. But now we, we, we know it will be possible, so it will be in person. That's the first uh, answer to your question. It will be in New York in December. And uh, the program of ICC is always a program that tend to balance uh, 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 new evidence, uh, new trends in coronary surgery, with like the uh, uh, really the backbone of our subspecialty or super specialty, I should say. So um, there will be classic topic, uh, multiple arterial grafting, a minimal invasive uh, 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 coronary surgery, the debate on on versus off pump, uh, the use of uh, the flow meter. But then uh, there will be uh, uh, a new topic. Uh, we will discuss, uh, for example, uh, 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 the impact that COVID had on our uh, profession. We have uh, we are very proud to have a dedicated session to coronary surgery in women and by women which is a, 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 a topic that has uh, uh, too often been neglected in other uh, meetings. We will discuss the evidence from uh, 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 new trials, uh, Excel, Ischemia, Laos. There is a lot of new information and uh, the reading of the new information is not necessarily easy and not necessarily univocal. And then, uh, we will also have, a, we have two sessions we are very proud of uh, uh, that, that we believe will be very useful to our attendee. One is uh, about uh, 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 the heart team and, and what we really want uh, uh, to provide to the attendee is the answer to the debate with the interventional and clinical cardiologists that you have every day at your heart team meetings. And also we will have a session of how to build a successful coronary program in different parts of the world. So like uh, the, 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 the instruction book for a new chairman. So this is just part of the program and uh, uh, much more also to come. That is great. I think, uh, honestly, uh, being uh, uh, the center uh, of promotion of an education focus uh, for coronary surgeons, uh, to be uh, well aware of uh, the scientific and academic background behind cardiac surgery, to make sure that during the heart team discussion, they have their own tool and they have their own uh, uh, arguments to sustain, to prove, to convince uh, the audience uh, whom they are talking to uh, about the benefit of coronary bypass surgery is essential for the current and the future generation of coronary surgery. And so this is an incredible educational tool that you guys are, are all putting together. And it, it will be, Dr. Taggart, there will be the possibility, and Dr. Pascas as well, there will be the possibility to uh, attend virtually or, or, uh, or no, like uh, we, we are all missing in one way to, to, to fly, to be together, to have a dinner. But uh, if someone can't join, can, uh, can, uh, can he join uh, remotely or how does we will look like? We plan to, Tom, do you want to answer that? Yes, we, we plan to record this, the meeting and to provide it uh, availability or access to it online after the fact. But we are not going to have live streaming. We wish to push back uh, to our norm of in-person meeting uh, and collegial discussion, uh, in-person interaction in New York City this December. So. In short, there will not be a streaming function. One will not be able to attend remotely in real time, but it will be possible for members of the International Society for Coronary Artery Surgery to access the program as it's recorded and presented online uh, shortly after the meeting. Excellent. So this is still uh, the possibility to look 
it uh, on a on a on a remote side, but on the other uh, on uh, not on a live Zoom. And and I and I think honestly, we are all really missing the opportunity to connect. There was a beautiful line recently said by one of the CEO of, of a very important business company in New York City, and he was saying uh, he was underlined the importance still to go to an office for how much we are benefit uh, all all of us of this remote learning or remote working at the end it's in an office that we exchange that human connection that allows to train a young person that allows to establish a human relationship other than only a professional one to exchange uh, in front of a coffee an idea or a thoughts or talking about the single individual patients that you are you are worried about that you have to operate in the next week there is a humanity behind all of this that is essential in pushing ahead and making us all better surgeons when you are by yourself in your office there is a sterility of of, of this process you lose something out of it dr tiger what do you think about it I, I, I'm in complete agreement, and if we've learned anything from Zoom, there are two things. The first is, it's a great innovation. It's like um, the mobile phone or the microwave. It really has its role, but it doesn't. And what it doesn't do is fulfill that, as you have just said so eloquently. It doesn't fulfill that need for the personal communication that both you and Mario have exaggerated emphasized and exaggerated. So I'm in complete agreement. And I have to look at my own diary just now when I look at the invitations to different meetings I have just now between now and February, there's an overwhelming feeling around the world. People want to have in-person meetings. Yes, definitely. It's something that we are all missing. I just want to say, first of all, welcome to everybody who is watching us. It's uh, we, we are receiving a, a message from U Ukraine, Brazil, Vienna, Miami, New York, Barcelona, Connecticut, uh, uh, Chile. And uh, if uh, any Colombia, uh, uh, Texas, if anyone wants to uh, put a, uh, any question, you guys can use any of the social media platform that you are watching this live from and ask uh, any one of the attendees uh, one of your question about ICC or the International uh, uh, Coronary Surgical Society. And let's move towards the idea of this society. So... Uh, what is or what will be actually what, uh, International Coronary Surgery um, Association uh, uh, ISCAS, what it will be, what was the idea behind it? Where are we moving forward? Where are we at currently and right now? Dr. John Pascas, can you give us a little perspective about it? You know, uh, John Luca, it wasn't too very long ago that people wondered whether coronary surgery would have a future. <laughs> And I think actually the future of coronary surgery is very bright indeed. I think we are actually entering the golden era uh, of coronary surgery uh, because as we improve what we do surgically in the OR, uh, we have to remember we're, we're addressing, we are providing the only surgical therapy for the number one killer of human beings, which is coronary artery disease. Coronary bypass surgery is the surgery that addresses the most common cause of death of human beings, period. That's why it is so very important. And it deserves separate focus, not as a part of an organization devoted to everything from congenital heart disease to heart failure therapy to transplantation to mitral and aortic surgery, et cetera, et cetera, but rather as a separate entity focused solely on optimizing quality in the surgical therapy of the number one killer of human beings. And that's why the International Corning Congress was brought into being uh, six, seven years ago. And as it's grown, as attendance has grown and interest has grown, we've recognized that an international society um, <coughs> focused on coronary surgery and supporting coronary surgeons around the world would have merit and value. Uh, and make a contribution to patients uh, and to physicians uh, globally. So the ICC, the International Coronary Congress, has in essence grown to the point where an international society for coronary surgery um, is useful and necessary. And, and so we've created that this year. Um, attendees at this year's International Coronary Congress 
uh, will become members of the International Society for Coronary Surgery. Members will have a steep discount uh, for the registration uh, to attend the International Coronary Congress. They'll have access to learning materials on the online website. Uh, and we look forward to very active participation uh, from the global membership um, in educational exchange online uh, and in the uh, design and conduct of the annual meeting. So we're very excited about coronary surgery in general, uh, and we recognize that it's a global problem. It's no longer just a problem of a few wealthy countries. Coronary artery disease is now the number one killer of mm. globally. So we wish to address the surgical treatment of that killer on a global basis. And that's the rationale for the creation of the International Society for Coronary Artery Surgery. That's great. So basically a society, as I, I like to, I like this line that I learned from you, Dr. Pascas, a society of nerds in, uh, in coronary surgery. That's, that's what, what it is. And uh, I love uh, this, this dedication and passion for uh, a topic, uh, coronary surgery, that for way too long has been uh, somehow put on a side uh, uh, among uh, all of us cardiac surgeons. And uh, if we have paid a price, uh, uh, if patients unfortunately also paid a price, was also our own responsibility to do not give uh, a, that dedication that a microsurgery like coronary surgery require. So uh, ISCAS, International Society, Dr. Tiger, how, how uh, Dr. Pascas told us a little bit uh, uh, how to join. Uh, what will be the intent of the society? Who should join? Uh, am, uh, I'm a, a young attending. I, I'm just, I'm very interested uh, in coronaries because also it's the only thing that I can do uh, in my own practice because all of the cool uh, valve case are done by the senior surgeons. Can I join? And I'm a very senior top surgeon dedicated to coronary surgery. Should I receive a special invitation or how does it work? So we are still in the um, throes of organizing the membership. What we do know is we have given a commitment to that everyone who joined the previous ICC will have a first year automatic membership of the society. And that will entitle those members to have a substantial discount to attending ICC this year. After that, it will, like many societies, have an annual membership fee. But it won't be a meeting that or an organization that just has a once a year kind of international coronary congress meeting. So we plan to have regular online activities. Like, so for example, a great example is a recent paper by Andre Lema in JAMA Cardiology suggesting that skeletonization of mammary arteries may be bad for you. And yet that is one of the things that we think underpins the way to do arterial revascularization. So that would be a perfect example of when things like this happen. If you're a member of the International Society, we will have regular online forums to discuss issues like this. So it's not going to be a society just linked to once a year meeting of the ICC. We plan to make it a very interactive, frequent society where things are regularly discussed online. And if there's not anything new that has arisen, we may take a specific topic like drill down, what is the real evidence for the radial artery? What is the real evidence for endoscope? I mean, we have evidence coming out, for example, that endoscopic harvesting is potentially da damaging. So the point I would make is that by being a member of ISCAS, you would be involved in these very regular online forum. We still have to finalize exactly how much the annual structure will be, but we want to make it competitive so that most people will feel they want to be part of this society. And without rehearsing the need for the society, um, we hope we'll do it in a way that people would actively want to be members. That's excellent, uh, Dr. Taggart. And, and Mario, this is exactly goes into the... Um, um, into the direction of what we have discussed before, uh, uh, this live meeting, and this is just the first of a series, this live meeting could represent a forum where we discuss topics and where somehow we offer uh, scientific tools uh, to the general public and to the general population of cardiothoracic surgeon interested in coronary surgeons on how to interpret 
all of this amount of data that every day uh, comes uh, on your fingertip through your phone. Uh, uh, somehow I call it scientific noise because sometimes you are so overwhelmed by so many papers that looks at the same subject and uh, provide you completely different uh, outcomes or uh, final conclusion that you feel almost uh, astonished, you feel uh, uh, confused in all of this. So having a society that, I don't know, every month organize a live talk like this and takes one topic of discussion that could be ischemia trial, could be arterial revascularization, could be uh, skeletonization or radial artery and try to dissect it, analyze it and give a very solid home message, take home message uh, that, that anyone can, can listen to on a Saturday morning could be beneficial for, for, uh, for everyone. What are your thinking? How did you imagine these live talks? You, you, you were the one who, who promoted this idea and what were the, 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 what do you foresee ahead of us? Well, thank you, Gianluca. I think you are right. You know, we academic surgeons have this uh, very annoying tendency to generate new evidence. So uh, uh, there is a lot to discuss. Uh, I think, you know, the, the key idea, and uh, John and David share this uh, uh, concept, we, have a, we are all involved in uh, uh, other societies. We know that, uh, well, society have clearly an important role, but they just by their nature, they are generally slow and uh, they are uh, uh, generally far from uh, their members. I mean, they, there is the annual meeting, uh, there may be other initiatives, but uh, 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 being uh, members of the society doesn't really mean to get a lot of feedback from uh, or involvement in that society with the exception of a few activity and with the exception of uh, the leadership. So we are thinking of something completely different. Uh, we are thinking of uh, a very close interaction with the members. Uh, uh, we have a, a, a master in coronary surgery, both on uh, the technical uh, part of surgery and also on uh, uh, the uh, 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 data and, and uh, uh, academic part of it. So I think what we want to provide, it's really a, 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 a clear, simple analysis of important topic, both on the technical side, how do you do your Y graft and when do you use your Y graft or two separate uh, inflow or exactly like, uh, like uh, David was mentioning, how do you read the umbrella me paper on JAMA cardiology? Is it uh, true that uh, skeletonized mammary put that mammary at higher risk of uh, 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 occlusion? And I think, uh, 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 well, I hate uh, Zoom like all of you, but I think it's a great tool for something like that, having uh, online informal conversation. Now, I want to, to highlight the fact that there should be informal conversation because you just yelled at me because I, I am wearing a, a, a red shirt and I don't have a tie and, 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 and uh, I'm not so sort of formally dressed. But the idea is really to have an, an open and friendly conversation with uh, uh, people who have uh, content knowledge about important topics. And this is how we look at the society, not so much about politics, but really about interaction. And let me just say, as a personal experience, uh, about personal interaction and the value of uh, working with uh, uh, other people that are interested in your field, that I can personally tell you at least two stories of a senior coronary surgeon that have changed their continent uh, the continent where they work after uh, 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 the faculty dinner of the ICC at the Harvard Club. That night where we generally close the Harvard Club or they throw us out because we don't want to leave. So that's why putting together people that are really passionate and focus on coronary surgery is so important. And also yeah. different generation, we give this a lifetime achievement that to me is one of the best moments of ICC where we recognize our mentor and then we are open to the trainee. So we, we, we really want to bring the whole spectrum of the uh, uh, coronary surgery community together.
And Gianluca, if I could just add to that excellent exposition by Mario, our plan would be, and we have discussed this in theory, and you've kind of been part of this so far, so if we have something like uh, Andre Lamy's paper in JAMA Cardiology recently talking about skeletonization, we would have him present it and hopefully have an educated panel to discuss it. If we take the Laos file, we would ask Richard Whitlock to do the original. So we would really try and go for very high quality presentations where we have the original authors or principal investigators of these studies presenting the data and then with a live online discussion by informed participants. And I think this would add something to what we haven't had before. Rather than have a big paper presented and you don't hear it discussed till the meeting the following year, by which time already the mindset has been formed, by having this interactive online regular discussion way to present really important papers, I think would be very attractive to the cabbage community. Completely agree. I think that this is exactly, if, if in one side we are all uh, missing a person and a human interaction, on the other side, the speed, the velocity the, uh, in which the amount of data get yes. generated and uh, get, get uh, pulled around, uh, around the scientific community requires a tool of all of us to be way more efficient in, in replying immediately, in providing, again, a scientific tools uh, to the general, to me, uh, a, a young cardiac surgeon interested in coronaries that suddenly have always skeletonized his left internal thoracic artery or right internal thoracic artery, who read this paper, how should I interpret? Is my patient on Monday? Should I really took a small pedicle or, or, or can I keep continually doing what uh, I was doing it? And this is important because at the end it is the life of my Monday's morning patients. So it's important that we provide some tools to tell you, no, don't worry. I mean, you're still doing the right thing. You can keep skeletonizing or no. I mean, it's actually better if you start to take a small pedicle because uh, we, we saw that this is uh, a true evidence. So it's important to provide Im immediate response uh, to this question that can arise in the mind of all of us who every every day, every every morning wake up and have two, three, four patients to treat uh, in the operating room and to take care of. So Dr. John Pascas, tell us a, a little bit more about uh, uh, the uh, topic of uh, ICC. And if you have also not only International Coronary Congress, as Mario was mentioning, was also has always been very famous for his uh, post Congress uh, or around the Congress events. What to expect this year? What are we planning? Uh, uh, I mean, we, we have a very high expectation. This is we have not met in two years. This is New York. Uh, uh, it's a little bit your home. So Tell us a little bit. It, it will be the door of your house open? It, it, it's going to be a big party in your living room? Or, or what, what to expect? We're looking forward to a uh, really joyful uh, reconnect, reunion uh, of the international coronary uh, community. Uh, and uh, so we welcome the international coronary community to New York this December. And I should just back up before I answer the question about the social events. Uh, to mention and to thank the other societies from around the world who have helped uh, support the foundation and the ongoing um, accomplishments of the International Coronary Congress, uh, whether it's the um, you know Brazilian Society, the it, uh, the Indian Society, or the Japanese Association for Coronary Artery Surgery, a national organization that's almost a quarter of a century old. Uh, they've all uh, and many others, I should say. Uh, including the STS and the AATS uh, and the British Society, um, ha have helped ICC because I think they've all recognized that it's important and that this initiative um, uh, is complementary uh, to their own educational missions. Um, that said, uh, we're very much looking forward to a very fun time in New York City. Uh, we're going to emphasize uh, many social uh, options and opportunities. Uh, there will indeed be uh, a gala uh, we're looking forward to, we're looking at several possible sites for it. Of course, faculty um, uh, dinner and, and all attendee receptions uh, will go on. Uh, New York City will be open at that point. We anticipate Broadway will be in full swing. All the museums will be open. All the restaurants are open. Um, while we were really hammered uh, by the first uh, wave of COVID uh, here in New York City, 
Uh, now the vaccination rate is very high. Um, the uh, infection rate is extraordinarily low. Uh, we are no longer obliged to wear masks in public. Uh, uh, and uh, the city is essentially completely open now. Uh, and we anticipate that that will be uh, you know, completely open in every way uh, in December. Uh, we are encouraging attendees to be vaccinated. Uh, there may be some travel restrictions still in place for unvaccinated uh, people, but I would anticipate that the vast majority of our attendees uh, will be vaccinated. And we look forward to a mask-free uh, you know, social uh, interaction with our friends and colleagues from around the globe. That's excellent, and thank you so much. We we, we can, uh, Mario, start immediately with, with a question that comes uh, uh, from uh, uh, LinkedIn. Is there any news about uh, Roma trial? We are all expecting the future of, of, of coronary surgery to be somehow shaped, curved in, in, in a very physical uh, form uh, by the uh, acceleration and results of Roma trial. Uh, what to expect when Roma Trial is expecting to to provide the first uh, uh, the first feedback, and uh, uh, when uh, uh, what is new about it? W what there will be the next the next uh, the next big data the big, the next big deadline? So Gianluca, I would say uh, if you in the ideal world, if you have to design an RCT, especially an RCT or more, over than over 4,000 patients, it would probably be a good idea not uh, to have a pandemic in your way. So it's not that the pandemic uh, generally was uh, helpful for clinical trial. However, Roma, as always, has been the exception. And I am really incredibly grateful to the investigator that uh, kept uh, screening and enrolling patients, despite the fact that they were understaffed, they were uh, 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 dealing with, uh, with the COVID, but uh, as soon as they uh, went back to some form of normal activity, they were back uh, uh, screening and enrolling patient. So we, uh, most trial have uh, had a dramatic drop in the enrollment rate, uh, uh, large trial have been shut down because of the pandemic. Roma had a, a, a reduction of around 15 to 20 percent of the enrollment rate, but uh, we kept our uh, enrollment uh, even during the pandemic year. And now we are very rapidly picking up uh, now that all the sites are going back to normal. So we are at around 3,000 of the 4,300 patients that we need with uh, uh, excellent completeness of follow-up and the uh, 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 crossover rate that is uh, between 1 and 1.5%. 1 and uh, um, we will probably be like five, six months beyond uh, schedule the uh, uh, original, uh, the anticipated uh, date for the primary uh, uh, um, analysis was 2025. It may be the end of 2025, but we are still aiming for, uh, for uh, that date. And uh, uh, also, uh, uh, Roma has generated uh, 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 a very important spin-off trial. I think the most important is Roma Women that will basically be a prosecution of the trial that will include only women. That is the first time that in a, 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 a cardiac surgery, a trial will be powered specifically to answer the question uh, of, uh, 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 well, any question, but in this case, multiple arterial in women. And there are conversation to uh, also have a Roma radio where basically we will test the hypothesis with the radial artery only. So a lot of uh, things happening. Uh, we will have an investigator meeting. The next one is uh, in October at the European Association. Everyone is invited to join, but uh, overall we are very happy about the trial. That's awesome, Mario. Thank you so much for this uh, uh, incredible summary and, and very excited uh, to see uh, these uh, two uh, spin-off uh, uh, potentially uh, coming uh, uh, and uh, to 
full birth, uh, particularly Roma women, uh, that I think answer an incredible question about uh, is uh, treating coronary artery disease in women uh, should be different uh, from a surgical point of view. Should we use different type of, of, of conduit? Uh, are radial artery that are uh, uh, generally or famously have been a little uh, more uh, famous for, for the risk of spasms in women uh, more prone to it or not? Are the benefit of an arterial conduit in the smaller size uh, BSA of women uh, the same as a man? So there's so many very interesting topics. And, and I think that this is uh, not only for uh, gender equality, but really to differentiate, to, to go down into the granulation of what we every day do, understand what is the uh, overall risk even of coronary surgery for men and for women. Is there a different risk? And, uh, and so it will be an incredible topic and it will be incredible spin-off of data that are coming from, uh, from this important trial. So we, 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 we are really like touching a series, we have to, to, to touch a, a series of important elements. And, and, and uh, I just wanted to give a little bit more time to Dr. Taggart and Dr. John Pascas to give us a little bit of uh, more uh, debriefing of what to expect as coronary surgeons for the future of these specialities. As Dr. John Pascas was saying uh, in the beginning, and he, he was right, uh, 20 years ago, we were almost celebrating the death of coronary artery bypass grafting. There will be only stent. We are not going to perform any more sternotomy. And, and what is looking ahead? What a young surgeon who wants to embrace this, this niche should do? And uh, is it a, 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 an intelligent uh, career move to embrace uh, to a different level coronary surgery? Or only is the natural step that you have to wait until when finally a mitral valve or a nice root surgery comes in your hand and you finally can define yourself uh, like a, a fully, fully, fully trained cardiac surgeon. Dr. Pascas, I think you are muted. Frank, thank you. I, oh, yeah, good. Please. Let, let's be honest. Um, Coronary surgery is the technically most demanding subspecialty, or I would call it a super specialty within cardiothoracic surgery. I mean, the margin for error uh, of each stitch placed in a thoracic abdominal aneurysm or an ascending aortic or arch replacement, the margin for error is one or two or three millimeters. And the margin for error in arterial grafting is one or two tenths of a millimeter. It's a tenfold difference in precision that is required to achieve excellence in coronary surgery as compared to achieving excellence in mitral valve repair or aortic surgery. So I don't think we should ever talk about, you know, the, the, the cool surgery that's non-coronary. I think the cool sur surgery, quite frankly, is the coronary artery uh, surgery. And it's the one that the only surgery that, that addresses the number one killer of human beings. So as a surgeon, I choose to devote my uh, career to focusing uh, my skills and efforts and innovation attacking the number one killer of human beings, not um, an esoterica or an occasional uh, disease process that is interesting because it's rare. So that, that, that's my first point about coronary surgery. Uh, I do believe firmly that we are entering a, a genuine renaissance in coronary surgery. Uh, I do think that we have much room to improve our practice locally, uh, nationally, and globally. I think that there are good bodies of evidence that would tell us that, on average, we're not doing a perfect job in coronary surgery globally, and there is much room for improvement, and our patients will benefit. I think we've got to be able to teach our colleagues the talking points to advocate for their patients in the multidisciplinary heart team conversations that go on in their hospitals in every part of the world. They need to know the distillation, the summary of the new evidence that the cardiologist can recite quickly, uh, but we need to be able to provide those talking points to our surgeons. And there's no one better to do that than David Taggart or Mario Gaudino at the International Corny Congress. And armed with those conversation points with that kind of in-depth understanding of the data, they can advocate confidently uh, for what's best uh, for the patient at the uh, time of those multidisciplinary heart team meetings. Um, I think that the technical conduct of coronary surgery is endlessly fascinating. 
and, and I am a happy coronary nerd. I am unapologetic. I love to perseverate uh, and focus on the minutia of coronary surgery. I can do it all day, all night uh, for a decade or three. Uh, in fact, that's what I've been doing. Uh, and I look forward to sharing that passion uh, with other people interested in advancing the craft of coronary surgery. I think the best vehicle for that is International Coronary Congress and this new International Society. And we really look forward to leveraging the particular expertise of people from around the world. You know, off-pump bypass uh, was birthed uh, in South America. Um, the, the center that does the most off-pump bypass is Japan. I think the Japanese developed multi-arterial grafting and off-pump bypass as a routine in response to very, very aggressive coronary interventional uh, behaviors. And as David Taggart and others have pointed out, there's this huge variability in the ratio between PCI and cabbage in different parts of the world, even in different parts of the same country, even in different hospitals within the same city. And when we see that kind of variability, you know that Everyone cannot be right if they're doing different things. And it's our moral obligation to figure out what is right and to teach that globally. This is excellent. Uh, and I, I think that this is exactly the ecos that all of this society of coronary surgery wants to have and International Coronary Congress wants to have. Dr. Taggart, some more words. Uh, we, we, we are starting to walk towards uh, the uh, 45 minutes. We, where are we? Uh, uh, we? We can say that coronary artery bypass grafting unites the world. In, in one way, coronary artery disease is the first cause of death in, in, in a lot of countries worldwide. So uh, what is the international aspects of our organization and ICC? What do you foresee ahead of us? Uh, tell us uh, some, uh, some, uh, some more words about it and uh, uh, we will uh, are preparing for our closure here. Thanks, Gianluca. I'll try and keep it brief. I cannot add much to what John and Mario have said. And thank you to all the people who are sending in their messages that I'm reading on my screen from around the world. So thank you and hello to everyone. I think the take home messages are this. We still do throughout the world around 60% of all cardiac operations are for coronary artery bypass grafting. The second point I'd make is we have arguably the strongest evidence basis for any interventional procedure that's ever been undertaken for any condition in medicine. We nevertheless work in an environment where we are subjected to constant attempts to manipulate and distort data against cabbage in favour of stents, when the data shows quite the opposite. So to me, the importance of we as a group of coronary surgeons promoting what we're doing is to send the message throughout the world that we stand in the favor of both what is best for patients and what reflects evidence-based medicine. And I think having an international society for coronary artery surgery will take that to a different level because I think rather than us acting as disparate groups throughout the world, to have an international society where we present the face of coronary artery surgery, I think would be a very important move forward for everyone. And the final thing I'd say is that um, I think for many patients undergoing coronary surgery, the traditional operation of a mammary artery and two vein grafts on bypass is a great operation. It is well proven. It has stood the test of time. But there's no one listening today who would say that is the right operation for all patients all the time. So the question is, how do we as a group of surgeons, not being divisive amongst each other, but as a group of surgeons trying to represent the benefits of coronary artery surgery worldwide, how do we as coronary surgeons move forward as a group? This is uh, excellent, uh, Dr. Target. So uh, I will ask uh, uh, Dr. John Pascas to uh, close and, and, and repeat a little bit your, uh, the day in which uh, International Coronary Congress will be. Jo Mar Mario, please. Yeah, I just want to say something that, I was, that came to my mind while David was speaking. I think we need to admit that uh, coronary surgeon are really a different breed. I mean, we have resisted that easy temptation uh, of considering a cabbage uh, 
less interesting than uh, other surgeries just because uh, it seems to be easier. Uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication is uh, one of my favorite quotes from Leonardo. And, and so coronary surgeon or those like John and David that, that have dedicated their career or myself to coronary surgery really are a different kind of uh, surgeon. We, were, we did not e fall in love with the uh, big tube of the aorta or the trendiness of uh, the mitral hair. <coughs> On the other hand, we set for ourselves a very high bar. We are people that consider a one millimeter difference, an unacceptable uh, 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 difference. And, and also, in terms of science, well, CAPG is the most well-studied intervention in the surgical world. There is no other surgical intervention that has been painfully and in study such in depth like coronary artery bypass surgery. I am a coronary surgeon. I don't say anymore that I am a cardiac surgeon. I say I'm a coronary surgeon. I'm proud of it. I would not change that with anything else. And it just makes sense that people like us stay together. That's why the society is a great idea. So I just wanted to say that. Excellent. Excellent comment, Mario. Dr. John Pascas. Give us uh, again a, 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 another wrap up around the annual meeting. When it will be? How to to uh, to to join and to uh, um, subscribe to the meeting itself? And uh, um, some final words, please. So I I, I want to thank first uh, you, Gianluca, for helping to organize uh, this and uh, uh, figure out the uh, digital infrastructure for it, and of course. Uh, as always, uh, my friend and colleague David uh, Taggart, uh, we have been a part. We've been partners in this from the very beginning, and will be to the end. Uh, Mario has been a fantastic addition to our duo, and now a trio. Uh, as program chair, he's put together a spectacular uh, program for this year, um, and uh, brings an authority and uh, academic. Uh, uh, passion to uh, the International Corny Congress that is, uh, frankly, without equal. Uh, anywhere. Um, we are committed to elevating the quality of coronary surgery globally and to advocating for patients with coronary artery disease to have the best and most appropriate therapy for that life-threatening uh, disease. Um, we are committed to an international approach to that task. Uh, we uh, aggressively partner uh, with our international organizations and colleagues from around the globe I've been delighted to see in the chat during our brief conversation today, uh, people uh, contributing their thoughts and ideas and, and uh, uh, interest from literally every corner of the globe. Uh, and, and that is really what makes this all worthwhile. Uh, so we look very much forward to welcoming uh, as many of you as humanly possible in person in New York for an in-depth discussion over two and a half days of every aspect of coronary artery uh, bypass surgery in all of its shapes and forms, uh, on pump, off pump, sternotomy, non-sternotomy, robotic, non-robotic, arteries, veins. Uh, there is science around all of it and we wanna share that science and discuss it uh, and enjoy our shared passion for the surgical therapy uh, that addresses the number one killer of human beings. So please come to the International Corny Congress in December. You can access it online at internationalcornycongress.com. Um, if you just type in International Corny Congress to your browser, it'll go straight there. The registration portal is open. We are eager to uh, uh, have uh, abstracts submitted as well. There will be numerous abstract sessions. Some will be plenary, some will be parallel. Um, this is a, is a great opportunity for uh, faculty, uh, young faculty and even fellows and residents uh, to submit material, uh, come to New York and participate in this um, academic and educational exercise. We will indeed have um, a concurrent programming for surgical assistance in the operating room. There will be sessions focused uh, on the post-operative care of uh, coronary surgery uh, patients, on the early recovery after surgery, spoke, uh, focused specifically for the cabbage patient 
So there's something for everybody on the surgical team that cares for coronary bypass patients. All are welcome in New York in person. This will be our first time back uh, uh, as a major society um, since the pandemic struck. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming the world uh, to New York uh, for this year's International Coronary Congress. That's excellent. Thank you so much. I want uh, again uh, to uh, echo uh, uh, what uh, Dr. David Taggart, uh, John Pascas, and Mario just have said. Thank you to all of you who have sent so many text messages, uh, told us from where you are, where you are looking uh, this live from. Uh, and uh, this is the first of a series. We will uh, dissect more, more of the topics that are uh, our everyday uh, bread and butter. We will try to elevate with uh, top-notch uh, persons uh, the culture among coronary surgeons around the world. And uh, in the meantime, we are all looking forward to gather all together in uh, the International Coronary Congress uh, on uh, December, between the, third, the, the 3 to 5, to 5 of December 2021 in New York City. We welcome uh, to subscribe uh, uh, to, to, to the Congress from online and uh, uh, please subscribe also to the YouTube channel that you are, you are, you are looking for or the LinkedIn uh, address you are looking this live uh, to uh, be notified when your next live talk about the topic in coronary surgery will be. And it will be very vibrant, uh, will be very um, lively and we will take a, a, a topic and we will dis uh, dissect it in an in a appropriate way. Thank you so much everyone and I want uh, to uh, end this uh, broadcast uh, and thank you again. Thank you Dr. Taggart, thank you Dr. Pascas, thank you Mario, Dr. Gaudino, thank you so much everyone. We'll and Gianluca, just as we sign off, immense thanks to you and Mario for having the thought to bring this onto this new platform. It's been fantastic. Very well done to you and Mario. Thank you. Thank you so much.